I'm making this recording at 9.56 p.m. August 12th, 2021 in the United States, Milwaukee, Wisconsin to be exact. This is C.L. Whiteside. This is day three without any power because of the storm that knocked out half the city's power at the very least. Checking in with you now. 9.56 Now, if you were just tuning in to listen to the podcast, The Non-Microwave Truth by C.L. Whiteside, you are in the right place. Hey, but doesn't every, like, end of the world apocalypse movie start off like that? And my power really is off because of the storm, but I have fun, like, making messages, like it's the purge or the end of the world and sending it to friends. I mean, I might as well find some type of humor in this. Now, without any Wi-Fi, any electricity, I'm still able to do the podcast. Boy, technology is something else, ain't it? I'm in my spare room with my little setup and my microphone and my iPhone, and it's good to go, baby. All right, let's get to our first world problem, though, today. Would you rather be without water or would you rather be without electricity at your house? That's the first first world problem question. That's really a first world problem thing, too. I don't have any water. I don't have any electricity. Very first world-ish. Some people whole day and week been messed up, been angry, been rude, been mean, just because they don't have a little power. Like, you better go get some batteries. You better go get a generator if you can't treat people nice and with compassion and love. And I know for me personally, I rather have no power than no water. I just, like, think about can't brush my teeth, can't take a good shower, can't just get a glass of water. Can't flush the toilet either, so you really can't go to the bathroom. So for me, it would be worse to have no water than to have no electricity or no power, I guess. But but what do you think? And then this is the second part of our first world problem today. I know Wisconsin was not the only place affected by the storm that knocked out the power or created power outages. In fact, I know it happened in Michigan. It's almost a million, almost a million outages there, Missouri, Pennsylvania and Ohio. But my question for you is if Jesus was around, Yeshua was around, would he perform a miracle and give everybody their 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 power back, their electricity? And then I started thinking, would he make us wait a few days like you need to go a few days without power because you know why? You've been giving Netflix way too much time. I want you to get your focus around. And sometimes he just let things linger on. So people could start to appreciate other things or they really started to feel the the pain or the agony of it. And then he would come and rescue today like he did with Lazarus, like he allowed Lazarus to die in order that he could come and raise him from the dead. Because, I mean, if he wanted to, he could have just healed him when he was sick, but he didn't do that. So my first world problem question for you is, do you think if Jesus was around today that he would just perform a miracle and give us all our power back? And if so, do you think he would make us wait any days? So I think I asked three questions in this. The first one is, would you rather have no power or no water? Of course, we don't want either one of them, but you got to pick one. And the second one is, do you think Jesus will perform a miracle and give the city its electricity back? And if so, how many days would he make you wait? Let me know what you're thinking. Hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. My handle is championlife23. And this is our first world problem today. And I don't think it can get too much more first world problem ish than this. It is dinner time. You know, we got to go for takeout today because like I said, your brother doesn't have any power. But the title of this episode today is the microwave effect. I thought that would be a perfect title. This is episode 20, by the way, 20 episodes in the ball game already. Yeah. So we're going to talk about four microwave truths today. And because those truths have been microwaved, what is the microwave effect that it has on all of us? I'm not just going to leave you there, though. Of course, I'm going to give you the non microwave truth with it. All right. Here goes our first one. Information facts and news that we get today in our world is getting microwave it's always getting microwave you have to think twice about when you hear something you have to check the source you have to wonder what the bias is you have to be like what's the reason for saying this 
It's so much fake news out here. It doesn't make any sense. And part of that is because people are just aiming to get the news out the quickest. Forget if it's accurate. Forget if it's it's actually true. Just get it out there fast. The first thing you hear, put it out there. So most news you hear, do you really trust it? We're to the point now where you almost have to second guess it. Second guess everything. And this is the microwave effect at its finest. But it doesn't stop there. Oh no, it does not stop there. Because now people realize that a lot of the things they were taught in their history classes or get put got put in those history books isn't always the most accurate or the most truthful. They realize that there's some bias in here. They want those characters to look the best. So an example would be like America was discovered by Christopher Columbus. Was it really? I mean, how can you discover something or find new land when people are already living here? That's the topic for a whole nother day. But you get my point now. So because they have to question history and they have to question how other historical accounts tried to make the people of that time look better than they actually looked. People do the same thing with the Bible. And this is the microwave effect I want to get at today. People think since other historical accounts and information and news tried to make their leaders, their presidents, their their heroes of that time look great. And now we're finding out that some of these heroes and these leaders weren't actually great men and great people. People automatically assume that the Bible does the exact same thing. But I got breaking news for you. Here's the non-microwave truth. The Bible doesn't do that. The leaders and even the people that the Bible describes as heroes of faith will not leave out its hero's flaws. So I'll give you an example. King David. It says that King David was a man after God's own heart. But if you read the Bible, you'll realize that King David committed murder. He had a whole affair with a married woman. And some people will say it was even like a form of rape, how he did it and how he used his power. Like the Bible doesn't leave any of this out. In fact, you can find this in 2 Samuel 11. And I could name a whole bunch of other men. But just the last one I want to leave you with the, with this point is that the Bible even describes how Jesus' own disciples doubted. Like his own disciples who literally followed him around, they still didn't get it. They literally still didn't get it. So they didn't try to make these men seem like they were perfect and they clearly understood it. And it made so much sense to them, sense to them that their leader, their follower was going to die on a cross, resurrect from the grave. And that's what he had to do. Like the Bible clearly depicts their their confusion. It shows how they just didn't get it, how they were so much like you and me. But yet they were going to be the people that end up leading the church. A lot of historical accounts don't do that. They, they try to make their leaders seem like they got it completely and they understand everything. But the Bible is just 100 percent real. It just tells you what really happens. Like it's not trying to make them look better than what they are. So just think about that. Some of the first leaders of the church had doubts, kind of didn't understand who Jesus was at times or the magnitude of it. And the Bible doesn't sugarcoat that. It puts it in there. It tells the truth. So again, the non-microwave truth is this. The Bible is not like other historical accounts or historical information. It's a fact. It's real. It doesn't sugarcoat anything. It's the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. All right, now on to our second point on this episode of the microwave effect. And in most cases, this is true. In life, you get what you put in. Like, doesn't that make sense? I mean, in a lot of cases, it's very, very true. The harder you work, the more success you'll have. The more you put into something, the more you'll get out of something. You earn what you get. But this goes all against Christianity. Now, let me break it down to you. The non-microwave truth is this. We have a loving and gracious God who has grace. Grace is a hard concept and word for us to understand because we always have to work for what we get. But with grace, with God, with Jesus, you can't earn the salvation that he has already given to you. It's free. It's just something he gave to you. And I guess you got to break it down like this. In a lot of different religions, you have to work, you have to do so many good things in order to receive salvation or to get heaven. In Christianity, it's the exact opposite. 
you don't have to do anything but believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior to have salvation and to have eternal life. But I look at it like this. If you woke up and you had a billion dollars, I like to use money because people understand money. You wake up and you had a billion dollars in your bank account and somebody just gave it to you because they said they loved you. So you didn't do anything to earn the money and you can't give it back. But because they gave you something like that, it might transform the way that you treat every single person in your life because you realize that's such a blessing. This is what grace from God is. It's something that's already in our bank account. It's just a simple fact. Do you believe it's there or not? Or let's say this. I think this is a better one. You are dying like you are literally about to die and someone comes and saves your life. But in the process of saving your life, they had to trade places with you. And instead of you dying, they died in your place. There is no way you can repay that person back. But because of that, you might be transformed. You might be compelled to treat others with love. You might be compelled to show grace to people that have been getting on your nerve and been annoying and everything under the sun. And that's what Christianity is. You're not working to get to something. But you get compelled and you're transformed by God's grace and God's love. And that goes against our human culture. That goes against most things we're taught in this world. And on the flip side, this is very offensive to those who don't know God's love and God's grace. Because God and his word, they're very offensive to unbelievers. Because it tells them that without him, they are worthless. Then they deserve hell. And the microwave effect says, man, forget this guy. I don't want to worship or be a part of a God like that. But the non-microwave truth is, this is a God that loves you so much that he has a specific and unique plan for you. This is a God who sacrificed his son, who died on the cross and resurrected and experienced hell for you, even though he knew you would mess up and you don't deserve it at all. It's like preparing a meal a home cook meal for somebody who just spit in your face, punched you, doubted you, cursed you, and said they wanted nothing to do with you. He knew every single bad thing we would do, and he still died for us. We don't understand this type of love. That's that crazy love. And when I said you, I was also talking about me, because I don't deserve it either. And I know Jesus has even washed my feet. And if you ever saw my feet, I got some ugly feet. They ugly, but that's okay. I, I got to get a manicure. No, that's a pedicure. Well, I got to get one of them. You know, the one where you get your feet right. But I know Jesus will do that for me. That's how much he loves me. And I got some Flintstone feet. But um, let's get to that third point. And that third point on this episode of the microwave effect is this. You th People throw this in the, in the microwave. They say, if you don't support me or something that I do, you don't love me or you're not showing love. And the non-microwave truth of the matter is you can't support everything that someone is doing or your friends or your family are doing because sometimes it's just wrong. And sometimes someone may be supporting you, but their actual support is telling you that you're wrong or calling you out on your mess. You didn't support me. You were lying. I'm not about to lie for you. Man, I thought you had my back. You didn't cover for me. I'm not getting involved with this mess. Hey, you didn't promote my business on your page. You sell drugs. I'm not supporting that. Why didn't you say anything when I was arguing with that group? You just sat there. You were wrong, and you were the one who started it. Hey, you know, that was real bogus, man. A real friend wouldn't have told on me. Oh, really? A real friend wouldn't have put me in that predicament where someone needed to be told. Did you ever think about that? And the non-microwave truth is this. You can't support everyone with everything, especially in the way that they want to be supported. I just think about King David and Nathan. And this is in 2 Samuel verse 12, where you see that King David had been supported, but he had been supported for the wrong things. Like he allowed and was able to convince people to support him in committing an affair, a murder, covering it up being lazy and just chilling in the palace. And he allowed people to support him with his mess. But until Nathan came along and supported him in the right way and rebuked him and called him out, he wasn't going to make the necessary change. And though people seemed like friends and like they were just trying to help him out, they were causing King David more misery, more pain, more suffering in the long run. And that's the non-microwave truth. And that's what we're asking for at times too.
But that's the microwave effect. People want to be supported in the way that they want to be supported, rather right or wrong. But the non-microwave truth is, support them as though they are a brother and sister of Christ. And do what God and his word tell you to do. Okay, we're to the fourth one now. The fourth one on this episode of the microwave effect is this. It's the simple fact that our opinion, your opinion, my opinion, it's not worth as much as you think it is usually. But this is the social media effect. Social media makes us feel like all of our opinions are worth so much and we just have to share them. We just have to share them. That's the microwave effect that we have now. You got an opinion, share it with the whole world. Put it on your Instagram, put it on your Twitter, put it on your Snapchat, put it on your Facebook. You got to tell people your opinion. Oh yeah, or how could I forget? Just make a TikTok video about it. Especially about politics or social injustices or religion because those are the platforms to have good quality discussions. That's sarcasm, by the way. And the big thing that I'm really getting at with this social media, with this uh, microwave effect of sharing your opinion is that the world and our culture and the microwave effect wants to make things two sided. Like there's a Republican or there's a Democrat. There's a right or there's a wrong. When in a lot of cases, there are so many um, avenues and possibilities to certain things that there's a lot of gray to this. But. If you look at social media and you look at these outlets, a lot of times it's trying to polarize us. It's trying it's the opposite ends on on different topics. And there's no middle. There's no love. There's no grace. There's no compassion. There's really a lot of times every once in a while. There's really no discussion. There's really no honest dialogue and true dialogue where people are trying to come to an understanding. It's more so like I got to get my point out. You got to get your point out. And we butt heads and we collide. But man, where's where's the love at this? Love with this? Where's the grace with this? Where is the empathy? Like, what's the point? And the non microwave truth with this matter is this: there are oftentimes more than two sides to a particular topic. Often on these platforms, we don't even have all the information, and a lot of times it's biased. And one of the biggest points I want to make with this is, of course, you have a voice, but make sure that this voice is yours or more importantly, make sure that your opinion is just not based off your feelings that happen to be like a roller coaster. What does God's word say? Sometimes we don't need any more opinions. We don't need any more feelings. We need facts. We need biblical truths. We need people who aren't cast in the stone, but realizing that they could be in this person's position. Or someone could be giving opinions about them so they have empathy before they hit post. So the bottom line is this. Less opinions, more facts, more love. And realize even though that app is supposed to be there for entertainment and to create fun, it's trying to be another idol to you. And the microwave effect makes you feel like you have to share your opinion. You have to be on this app or you're missing something. But remember, a lot of you are not using the app. The app is using you. And this is the non-microwave truth. All right, so let's recap real quick, starting backwards with number four. Your opinion matters, but you know what matters more than your opinion? Biblical truth. Hallelujah. The third truth that people try to throw in the microwave is, you have to support me the way I want to be supported. No, you don't. Support them how God tells you to. On to number two. Most things in life, you get what you put in. You work for what you get. But Christianity, it's not that. Jesus defies that because he's gracious. He gives us salvation. Can't earn it. Just can't do it. And the first point of today is the Bible is real. It doesn't try to hide the heroes of faith or the leaders of the church. Try to paint them in a better picture than what it is. It tells you what actually happened. It is what it is. It keeps it 100. And this is the non-microwave truth, baby. Thank you. Thank you for joining me on episode number 20, the microwave effect. If you like it, love it, leave a rating, hit the five star, tell a friend, share it. Now, you're probably not going to hear from me for a few weeks because I'm going to try to figure out my life. I got school starting back. Football season is here. Kind of got to figure out my schedule. But don't go anywhere. Do not forget about me catch up on some podcasts that you might have missed from the non-microwave truth 
or some that or some that you just really really enjoy. But before you know it, I'll be back, and hopefully I'll come back with a couple wins. Be able to tell you that school is going very smooth, and hopefully have some fire for you. But man, pray for your boy. School's coming up. I hope these kids know how to act. Some of them haven't been in school in two years, so they might have lost their minds. But yeah, keep me in your prayers, and I'm gonna keep you in my prayers. This is the Non Microwave Truth, a Time of Grace production. Peace, punch, Captain Crunch. Say no to drugs and yes to Jesus. I'm out. Episode 20 in the books. Yeah.